Hi everyone, this is Stan, your favorite Polish-Taiwan YouTuber. Hope you're all having a great day, welcome to today's show. Today let's talk about the recent visit of Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen to the United States. President Tsai just met with the newly elected US Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, who is a Republican. While last year, the former Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, who is a Democrat, visited Taiwan personally. And while in Taiwan, she also had a meeting with President Tsai. This shows that both the Democratic and Republican parties in the United States express support for Taiwan. And don't forget forget that unlike China, the US is a democracy, and the officials are democratically elected, meaning that they represent the will of the people. So the support coming from the United States officials also shows the support and friendship between the American people and the Taiwanese. So everyone was very happy after that meeting, and the whole international community also welcomed the official exchanges between the US and Taiwan, as well as the normalization of the relationships between the two countries. And actually only the Chinese Communist Party and its supporters are angry now but they're always angry. In fact, the whole world cannot understand why the meeting between the President Tsai Ing-wen and Speaker McCarthy angered the Chinese Communist Party so much. They were so angry that even Xi Jinping decided to spend 200 to 400 United States dollars per person to hire Chinese people living in the United States to protest at the location where the Taiwan President and US Speaker of the House had a meeting. So see how big the contrast is here. The Chinese gangsters, actually their regime is looking like a criminal gang and not like a legitimate government. And the protesters they paid for are shouting that Taiwanese people are Chinese and that they oppose Taiwan's independence. And here we can see Taiwanese Americans and welcoming groups with cute Taiwanese black bear toys and slogans such as Go Taiwan! Go democracy! And Taiwan is great! Which were very positive and peaceful. On the other hand, the protesters paid for by the Chinese Communist Party had signs full of hateful messages such as One way to death! and get out of New York, get out of the United States. This clearly shows that Taiwan and China are two countries with completely different cultures and values. So far, only Russia and China, the world's two aggressive regimes, have spent money to mobilize the people living abroad to take part in protests and advocate that the other countries should belong to them. The protesters mobilized by the Chinese Communist Party are currently also laughed at by the Chinese-speaking internet, with some people writing the idiom recount history but omit one's ancestors backwards as forgetting history while going after ancestors, which is something that Xi Jinping often does. For example, mistakenly referring to the Tibetan King Gesser as King Sagar. There are many memes online with Xi Jinping making silly mistakes in Mandarin. Since the former Speaker Pelosi's visit to Taiwan last year, has anything unfortunate happened to the Chinese Communist Party and Xi Jinping as a result? Didn't Xi Jinping still successfully secure his third term as a head of state? Didn't the dynamic zero COVID and lifting of the restrictions that followed resulted in a major victory for the Chinese Communist Party? Didn't the Chinese economy and expert trade rebound in retaliation, as they say on the Chinese internet? Although Chinese citizens still don't understand why the official Chinese government claims that after the economy recovered, unemployment rates have been increasing, factories are still closing down, companies are still not paying their workers, and people can't even withdraw their savings. However, after Pelosi left Taiwan, the Chinese People's Liberation Army had a major victory. I'm talking about the military exercises around Taiwan. One of the missiles fired during those exercises even accidentally hit Japan's economic zone. But regardless, Xi Jinping's China has finally caught up with and suppressed the US and the UK. Even ordinary spy balloons require the US to deploy F-35s to shoot them down. Isn't this the long-awaited great change in the recent hundred years Xi Jinping likes to talk about so much? No one in the world, except for the Chinese Communist Party and its supporters, can understand why President Tsai Ing-wen's meeting with Speaker McCarthy is causing so much anger. President Tsai used to transit through the US every year before the pandemic, and China didn't react like that. Moreover, after the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives met with the President of Taiwan last year, did China suffer any actual losses? Why is China always overreacting? This time, the Speaker of the US House of Representatives didn't even come. It was the President of Taiwan who met with him on her way from the Central and South American countries back to Taiwan. It's just a short meeting on the way. 
a speech on the way home, and an interview with international media on the way home. What does this have to do with China? After Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, Xi Jinping was still re-elected as the chairman of the Chinese Communist Party and Central Military Commission. Chairperson with 100% of the vote and 2,952 votes in favor through the full process democracy. You see, China is a true democracy. They have a population of 1.4 billion people, but only 2,952 of them have votes, have the right to vote. This is what they call the full process democracy in Chinese. That means that the meeting between the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives and the President of Taiwan didn't have any impact on the Chinese government. Even if the US directly declared Taiwan as a diplomatic ally, it would not have any impact on the Chinese Communist Party and Xi Jinping's rule over China. Anyway, the internet censors and the Chinese police can always control the direction of public opinion within the Great Firewall of China and directly suppress any any voice of dissent coming from the little pinkies. Yeah, I really do feel sorry for the Chinese people who hope that their country becomes democratic, but it's very hard to achieve during Xi Jinping's rule and the rule of the CCP. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please press like, subscribe, and share. This is Stan. I see you in the next one. Bye bye.